before developers make a game, the zero communication is allowed. And to spice things up even further, each developer received an incredible motion capture suit to make stunning game animations. Thank you Rococo for sponsoring this episode and providing this insane equipment. This is a double cycle edition guys, so each dev will get two shots at working on the game. So with that said, onto the first cycle with developer number one. Hey, I'm a Jackster. I kind of want to make an indie horror game. You know, the ones that always have some odd story. Wake up, we must find Squidward. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. And by the end of the game, you always end up asking yourself, what the f did I just play? So let's make our own. I decided the story would play out like this. You're a person who's really bored, sitting in your house, mindlessly flipping through channels on TV, when all of a sudden you get teleported to a mysterious world. And then I'd leave it there for the next dev to continue. Phase one. Set up an environment for the cinematic. I found this house on the Unity Asset Store for free. It came with a couch, TV, pretty much everything we were going to need. Then, phase two, flipping channels on TV. I started making animations for the different TV channels that the player would flip through. I used Mixamo characters and imported them into Rococo Studio to attach them to the rig. I then set up some simple backgrounds, added some music and questionable voice acting. And this is what I came up with. Call now to get your free- But I- I love you. Two, three, four, move those in. Screw you, Michael. Every day, pet hands are being abandoned by their owners. Adopt a pet hand today. To wrap up the cinematic, we needed to teleport the player to a mysterious world. So I created another TV sequence where a scary clown shows up. Hey you. Yeah you. Are you bored? And then hypnotizes you. Just look right here. Right here. <laughs> Eventually, you wake up and you're somewhere else. It's weird, I know. Perhaps a bit too weird. So whoever's next, good luck, have fun. Now guys, our premium game development course, the Game Dev Rocket, is once again open to students. And you can even spin the holiday winter wheel and hope to gain some massive discount codes that go up to 50%. Guys, 2024 is the year that your dream of becoming a game creator working from home actually comes to life and it all starts right here. Within the Game Dev Rocket, you'll learn all about programming, game art, game design, how to market your work, all the while building nine completely different games. And then we'll even learn how to to upload your games on the massive online gaming platform Steam so that you actually earn money from your hard work. Seriously, just give the course a try. There's even a seven day money back guarantee, no questions asked. So that if you don't like the course, you get your money back guys. It's all good in the hood. But I tell you, you gotta check this course out. This is where you're going to make your dreams come to life. So we quickly learned how to set up the suit and get it working on our characters, making loads of different test animations. We were really impressed with the quality of those animations and how easily everything seems to sync up. So right after the spooky intro, we decided on creating a freaky circus management game. You can add tense and terrifying circus freaks to your world. You can then assign specific behaviors to your minions, such as dancing and fighting, and have people come and watch the show. <laughs> Very open-ended from here with lots of different possibilities, such as having more clowns, grotesque animals, giant elephants, a giant... And guys, if you like the look of these amazing Rococo suits and want to give one a try, check out the link in the video description and you'll soon be breathing life into your 3D characters. You will not be disappointed. Hey, I'm Kodir. I make dev vlogs on YouTube. When I heard about a game dev challenge that involves motion capture, I was immediately interested. When I first received the project, I had no idea what was going on. I tried to figure out what the previous devs had built, but after playing the game for a while, I still didn't get it. I did notice the super cool intro scene and this got me excited to try out the motion capture suit. I put the Unity project aside for now and made a list of animations that I wanted to record. With the list ready, I put on the suit and used the Rococo Studio application to start recording. The first couple animations were actually useful, like walk and attack animations. However, pretty quickly I just started recording animations using random items. After playing around for a while, I figured it was time to get back into the project and actually use some animations in the game. I noticed how there was a list of buttons that when pressed would trigger a new animation for the clown character and so I also added my own animations to the list. 
The current item placement system felt a bit awkward, so I rebuilt it and added a dynamic item bar. I also made it so players can place a tent that will spawn spectators. I still had some animations left that were not yet in the game. Some of them I decided to just leave out, and for others like the rope walking animation, I put them in the scene for the next dev to figure out what to use it for. Finally, I fixed the camera controller so it moves along the local axis, I refactored some existing code, and I added sound effects. Now guys, before we move on to developer number four, keep in mind that this is a path game challenge with zero communication. Therefore, major misunderstandings and twists are to be expected. So please guys, try and keep it nice and chill in the comments. Have respect for the developer's hard work, right? They're doing their very best here. With that said, starting from 2024, there will be a can't remove rule. So we avoid any awkward situations of developers removing previous devs work and so on. With that said, sit back and enjoy the absolute chaos that's about to unfold. All right, let's check this out. So we've got these little dudes here. Aha, ah, I see. So what do these guys do exactly? So we've got some cool animations going on here. Good use of the mocap. But my concern is there's no real game mechanic emerging. I mean, there's things we can do, sure, but I'm just not convinced it leads anywhere particularly interesting. We need some action. We need some high impact gameplay. So we're gonna do something bold. We're gonna scrap all this. We're gonna keep all the animations, all the good work that's been done there, but we're gonna reestablish a new game loop. Something clear, something strong. These guys might hate me for this, but hopefully by the end, we're in a good spot. I flattened the terrain and added a third person controller and follow cam. I then spawned enemies randomly around the player, sort of like a big dance floor. Next I made it so that enemies will chase the player when in range. This is already quite fun, just trying to avoid these guys. But we need bullets. Lots and lots of bullets. Alright, so maybe that's too much, but let's enjoy it. I found a nice balance of bullet speed and range. The shorter bullet range forces the player to get nice and close to the enemies. Man, this is really fun, but it's still not a game. But I have an idea. I reintroduced the circus tents as part of the core game loop. Players must destroy the tents. And remember those big headed kid models? Well, they're hiding inside and your job is to save them. That's right, this game is now about saving kids from carny creeps. Yeah! To make it more interesting, I made it so kids will follow you. But we need somewhere to lead them. And for that, I created these drop off points. The game loop was secure, and I had a bit of time to play with the suit. Oh, too many beers. It really is impressive technology, and I just got completely caught up and carried away. I'm officially out of time at this point. I hope you guys enjoy the updates. By the way, my name is John. I've got a YouTube channel called Lost Relic Games, where I rant about indie dev stuff and make devlogs. I'm also working on a combat side scroller called Blood and Me. A lot of bone crunching combat. You can check it out on Steam if you like. Okay guys, each developer has finished his first cycle and will now get a second shot at working on this game. So let's start cycle number two, beginning with Team Black from Prod. So this was a classic past the game challenge misunderstanding and we were both shocked and amused to see that the game had somehow turned into a top down shooter. So we backtracked a little and re-implemented our dream of building a terrifying circus management video game. And again guys, our apologies for this chaotic tug of war between the developers. From now on in the new year, every single Path Game Challenge episode will have a can't remove rule. So with that said, you can now place tents that spawn on your spooky clowns, and then there's some other tents which host shows. When you're ready, you can now open the gates to your kingdom and have a bunch of spectators come and tour around your circus. Each spectator has a glowing orb above his head, indicating how entertained or bored he is. When it's red, for example, you'll start to lose prestige, so you have to add special circus props to keep your guests entertained. To spice things up and add a little bit more to that gritty, disturbing atmosphere, 
clowns can now kidnap poor innocent kids. So you have to really make sure that, for example, when a bunch of kids enter a tent, that the same amount leave the show tent. If not, you've got a monstrous clown in your hands that needs to get fired immediately, or again, you'll start to lose prestige and eventually shut down your business. This is turning out to be an extremely strange game. So with that said, let's move on to the next dev. It's my turn to work on the project for the second time, and I was excited to see what the other devs had made. The first thing I noticed was how it definitely felt more like an actual game already. It has a cute character and a game loop that's somewhat easy to understand. One thing I noticed is how the UI takes up a lot of space on the screen. To improve this, I added a button that hides the explanation UI. I then increased the collider radius on the spectators so they're easier to select and I fixed their outline effect. I noticed how currently most items just keep the spectators happy and they don't really affect the clowns. This gave me the idea to add a new item that catches and eliminates all clowns in the scene for a limited amount of time. I then added some placement animations and particles for all items and also added new sound effects. Next up I moved the prestige bar down and put an effect that indicates when the bar gets dangerously low. Finally I made a system that shows indicator arrows for the enemies that are off screen. This way it's a bit easier to find and eliminate the enemy clowns. It seems like we're making a circus simulator where our sole customers are children and we employ sketchy clowns that abduct said children. I was trying to make a creepy horror game, but this, this is just a creepy game. Well, let's get to work. The first thing I noticed was that all the kids were just running around and it was hard to tell what was going on. So I gave props a certain trigger radius. And when a child walks into that radius, they enter a state of doing activity where they actually run up to the prop and start interacting with it. And then the player's rewarded with some money afterward. I ended up just taking some of these beautiful animations someone made and played them while the AI was doing an activity. I also added the ability to scroll in with the mouse so you could witness this work of art. And now you can see your customers interacting with activities as you squeeze every penny out of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Currently, this prestige number is kind of hard to understand, so I'm going to make it easier by turning it into a ball. I also added these descriptions of how the circus is doing as a whole, starting with popular and going to neutral, unpopular, and if the children are really unhappy, terrible. Let's move on to some gameplay stuff. So someone made this prop that spawns clowns and there's a chance for the clowns to abduct children. And I kind of want to change it so that clowns are always bad and whenever you see one, you should try to get rid of them. Now, clowns spawn randomly and eat children. And there definitely should be some punishment when you allow for a clown to eat a child. So I made it so children who witness a child being eaten enter a state of panic where their happiness levels rapidly decrease and they run around sporadically for a certain amount of time. The neat thing about this is it also notifies the player when there's a clown off screen because you start seeing a bunch of panicking kids in the direction of trouble. The last thing I added was this way to drag and drop kids so you could shepherd them toward your activities. This way you can kindly force them to give you their money. And that's it from me. Also, quick plug, I run a daily puzzle game called Supple on iOS and Android if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, thanks, bye. Round two. Whoa, okay. <laughs> so we've got these buttons back again. My shooting is gone. Oh, but okay, I can shoot, but it's not with bullets. So this is a bit of a hybrid between the kind of iteration I proposed and the original idea. Right, what, 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 what's going on? He's taken, <laughs> he's taken the kids, get away. Why aren't you playing with this? <laughs> I like this dude. Oh, what's going on here? Someone's inside the tent. He's having a great time. I really love what the guys have done here. And at this point, I think I'm just gonna polish it up a little bit, add some music, some atmosphere, and maybe iron out some of the balancing in the game systems. First, some death sounds for the enemies. I also added the highest concurrent people on screen as a scoring metric. Game over, got some sound and music. Importantly, I fixed an issue where dropped characters were not playing with the toys. I also made it so that toys break after a set amount of uses. This will hopefully add a new element of gameplay and balancing. And as the cherry on the cake, I added not just music, but a crowd ambience that increases in volume to match the amount of people on screen. How hard was the like getting into the game during cycle two? I didn't really understand like the clowns and the whole circus team. So I just kind of think what was there and then like added some stuff on top of it. All right. We're just gonna pump out props, pump them out, pump them out, pump them out. There's the first clown, let's kill him. 
and then also put a prop for the spectator to uh, to enjoy. I just added on to it. I thought it was kind of similar to like Roller Coaster Tycoon or something, so mm. I tried to make it seem more like that. Entertain yourselves. Entertain yourselves. So far I'm popular, so that's cool. It seems that the props disappear now. That's a new feature, I think. I was surprised to see it jump back, but I'm like, all right, somebody... <laughs> Somebody wants to keep that particular um, direction from we started with. So I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> that was cool because we ended up with kind of like a mix of the two different styles. <laughs> Absolute mayhem. The gates are a little bit strange in my opinion because whether they're open or closed doesn't really seem to impact the game at all. Like the kids just walk through the gate even if it's closed. So where would you take this like this strange experiment from here if you had to like expand on this game? In my experience when I played it there was no way to lose so maybe refine like the actual game part of it because I feel like right now it's more of just a simulation there's no challenge. I think at this point I've kind of reached the point where I can't really lose anymore like I just keep adding props keep making money and sort of end up in this endless cycle i can just keep setting up these props visually i would like to see some um differences as you play maybe different themes some kind of visual progress both with, with the with the player and the play style i can't tell if people are enjoying themselves by the sound it just sounds like people are being tortured yeah i think upgrades for the buildings and stuff would be nice so you don't just place them once and then wait well, until they get destroyed. And perhaps like different visitor types as well. But like certain visitors go to certain buildings to make the balancing a bit more interesting. I'll be honest, early on I was a little concerned we wouldn't get to a playable game. But this has actually turned out pretty well. Not bad at all. After the show, the kids explode into the air. Just like real life. I've tried to animate in the past and it's so manual and difficult, time consuming. So being able to just, you know, move my body and stuff like that and capture pretty accurately was interesting. 78, that's not bad. So for anyone watching, I challenge you to get 100 if you can. Okay, that's it for this absolutely wild year. 2024 is going to be incredible. And we hope you guys are going to take the leap and actually join the ranks of game creators that are already living their dreams, building games, thanks to the Game Dev Rocket course, which we've opened up for the first two weeks of the year. Again, there's a massive winter holiday sale. So go ahead, go over there, start learning how to build your very own games. It'll take you from complete beginner to actually learning how to sell your work on Steam. Okay, with that, said guys happy new year and see you real soon cheers